Uh, let me give you a couple announcements. For one, the songs are wrong in the bulletin, and it's my fault. Okay? That's my fault. So, let's leave it at that. Sorry. My fault. Leave it a lot. Huh? Leave it a lot. That's it. That's it. Uh, now, the other thing, so, Carl Smith, I'll give you an update on Carl Smith. He's been, uh, he's home, but he's on oxygen, and he's doing better. He's been uh, in his doctor's appointments, so talked to uh, Mary this week. Um, now, Buckeye Bill, his address is, is in, the, in the prayer request, where, where he is right now. And it's right out on the other side of 70 up on 256. If you know where Joanne Fabrics is over there, it's across, it's across 256 from there. He went out of that parking lot across 256. He's in Wesley Ridge. He's in room 209. I went and saw him Monday, and I, I was very discouraged after seeing him. He just, he's laying in bed, he couldn't talk very well, and I, it was heartbreaking. Um, so I went back on Thursday and went by his room. The bed was made, and it was empty. And I thought, oh no, what happened? Went on a little bit further, and he's sitting out in a wheelchair at the dining table eating with the other residents there. So I spent 45 minutes with him Thursday, and he was up the whole time in the chair talking to me. He was asked about everybody, and I have to tell you, he'll be mad at me if I don't. He misses all of you. He tells me every time he sees me, tell everybody I miss them so much. And, uh, so if any of you, now, so what the plan is right now, Annette is hoping that he's going to be well enough next weekend to transport him down to Georgia. Um, a after Thursday, I, I thought it's possible because he did make an improvement from Monday to Thursday. If anybody can get to see him, just see him a little bit um, over there, it, it, I'm sure it would help him a lot and he, would, he misses everyone. So he would love to see you. They're going to try to bring him to church next Sunday if they can. So that's that's the other thing. So be praying for that. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> so those are the requests that I have. And I, now there's other requests. Uh, Joe. If anybody needs anything done the spring now. Leaves, trim, gutters, cleaned out, whatever. Let Brent know or me know or something. That way we can plan. Manly missions. Yeah, coming out and getting that taken care of for you. Anything from there. Help. Yeah. Or if you know a neighbor or anybody. Yeah. If you know somebody it. that needs help or something. Yeah. Let them know and they'll help you out. Um, now, I think that's it for the prayer request right now. Our uh, updates and Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that we are able to be here together to worship you once again. Lord, you are worthy of our worship. You're worthy of our praise. We thank you, Lord, that we could sing these praises to you this morning. We ask, Lord, that what we say and do here will be done and pleasing to you. I ask, Father, that while we are here, your spirit will speak to us, change us to be more like Christ. I pray, Lord, that you'll make us to be the people that you have called us to be. And I ask, Lord, also that you would, well, we, we lift up these requests to you. Lord, we trust your will and we trust you. And we, we'll just mention Carl Smith and, and, and Buckeye Bill. And Lord, you know how precious these ones are to us. We just ask, Lord, that you'll be with them. And Lord, I thank you that even this past week, Bill said, Jesus is always with me. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that he has that certainty in you. I ask, Lord, that you'll give each one of us that same certainty. We ask that you be with our leaders and those that are in authority over us in our nation and around the world. We ask, Lord, that your will would be done and you would give them wisdom and guidance to make the right decisions in all that they do. We lift up all those that are civil workers, and we just ask a special blessing on them. Keep them safe. 
And we just thank you for all these things and so many more in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Now, forgive each other. Now, this is, uh, this is one of those commandments of Christ. This, these are given as commands from Jesus. Jesus says in John 14, 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Forgive. Forgive. So I looked up the definition for forgiveness. Or for, to forgive. To forgive is to cease to feel resentment against an offender. Why would we feel resentment towards somebody? <coughs> and what would constitute someone being an offender? I'm the type of person that thinks about this stuff. Like, why would a person need forgiveness? And why would a person, why would a person um, forgive someone else? You know, these things aren't, that's not natural. If somebody wrongs you, you want to get them back. That's, that's natural. To forgive, that's not really natural. You know what I mean? So what, what is it that causes us to, to have this? Because we have an expectation of how we're supposed to be treated, right? And if somebody doesn't treat us that way, then we're the one that's offended. Where do we get these, this thought of what you should do and what you shouldn't do? See, this is what I really have a problem with, those people that are, are godless. They, they're atheists. They say that they're atheists. And I wonder, where do you get your moral compass from? <clears throat> where do you get that? How do you know what's right and wrong? How do you know when, when to not offend someone else? Now, the, in sociology and psychology and stuff, they, they kind of try to come up with these things. Uh, why, why this stuff happens. Why? Because this would have evolved. Because, you know, everything was nothing, and then all of a sudden it was magic, it appeared, and evolved into what we have. How would forgiveness evolve? I, I don't think it would work. It can't evolve. This has to be something that's built into the plant here, or, you know, with, with us. So if someone doesn't behave or doesn't treat us the way that we expect, what can we do? <clears throat> well, well, before I go on to that, one, one more thing. When it comes to being right or wrong or, or what, is, what is morally right and wrong, one of the interesting things that they have found out is that, uh, you know, the tribes in Africa, the deepest parts of Africa that have never been in contact with civilization, and as far as we know, they, you know, yet in those tribes, it's... It's wrong to sleep with another man's wife. Do you know that? It's wrong to take something that belongs to someone else. Now, how did they? How did they know that? So it's, it's, it's ingrained in us. God is. Now, that, that was a different sermon a couple weeks ago. You remember that? Talked about how we're created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. So, but but here we are. When somebody does this wrong, what can we do? You can shun them, not talk to them, right? If they, if they offended you and they also broke the, the law, the civil laws, then you just let the government deal with them, right? Or we can forgive them and welcome them back into our friendship or fellowship, right? Jesus, from the cross, said, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. Those were the ones that were crucifying him. He said, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Now, John MacArthur says, now, Jesus didn't uh, eliminate their need for repentance and forgiving them for that one deed. But they still needed to repent. They'll still need to turn to God for salvation. But Jesus said, forgive them. They thought they were doing the right thing when they were crucifying Jesus. Forgive them for this. <clears throat> but um, going back to what MacArthur said it, it didn't cancel their need for forgive, forgiveness from, from the Lord and think about this also the people crucifying him didn't ask for forgiveness but Jesus said forgive them 
That's just, just let me point that out there. Interesting, right? So, forgiving and forgiveness. According to Jesus, if you want to be forgiven, you need to be forgiving. Hear that? If you want to be forgiven, you need to be forgiving. Now, and that's not from Buddha or karma or anybody else. That's from Jesus. And this is what he says in Luke 6, 37 and 38. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It will be poured into your lap. With the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So, for the record... Forgive and you'll be forgiven. That forgive right there is a command. Jesus has given that as a command. Forgive and you'll be forgiven. Now I included verse 38 because I wanted you to see it. Jesus makes an, a point. The, the amount that you forgive, the amount that you get, what, or the amount that you judge others is going to be dealt back to you. And he's, that's what he's stressing right here. What, what you do is going to be is going to come back to you. That doesn't mean karma. He's talking about when we stand before him. That stuff's going to, that's going to pan out. So if you lived a life of, that was forgiving, you can plan on being forgiving. And, and if you lived a life where you were judgmental towards everybody, you can expect some judgment. And that's what Jesus says. I'm not adding to that or taking from it. I'm telling you this is what Jesus says. And that's in the Sermon on the Mount. That's, that's kind of a big deal. Amen? Amen. Now, um, so uh, let me make another, I want to make sure I got this clear. Because the amount that you forgive coincides with how you are forgiven, but that doesn't mean a loss of salvation. I mean, you're going to lose your salvation, all right? But the thing is, I need forgiveness every day. Right? We need forgiveness every day. We, we mess up a lot. And when we mess up, we need forgiveness. How is God going to show me that forgiveness each day if I'm not willing to forgive others each day? Does that make sense? Now, a guy tells me, I forgave him, but I'm never going to talk to him again. Well, how much did you really forgive him? Oh, forgive me, I've turned down my phone. You forgive me? Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah. Just all I have to get. Huh? Just all I have to get. That, that, that's really good. I'm going to bring that up in later in the sermon. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so then we get this, then we get these ideas about what's forgiveness, what's not forgiveness. Um, We need to balance our forgiveness with discernment and trust. Jesus forgave and he said, go and sin no more. Amen? Jesus said that. When we forgive, here's the question. Is the person going to sin against us again? Say somebody has offended you or me. And we say, we forgive that person. Is that person going to offend me again with the same offense? So, for instance, if somebody stole something from you and they said they're sorry. You said, I forgive you. Now, is that person going to steal from you again? Okay. Now, they, they, they're sorry, so probably not, right? But you don't know. So this is where I say balance. We have to balance forgiveness with discernment and trust. True forgiveness means that you give the offender the opportunity to offend again. Think about that for a second. True forgiveness means to give the offender the opportunity to offend again. Now, I'll give you an example. Uh, if someone gets put in jail, let's say somebody gets put in jail for burglary. Um, when, if they're forgiven, they get let out of jail, right? And guess what? They have an opportunity. They could offend somebody again by stealing something else. You see what I mean? So that's, that's what I mean. If, when we forgive somebody, is that person going to offend us again? No. That's where we got We have to have some discernment. We have to have a balance of forgiveness 
and discernment. Uh, Dr. Phil says, past behavior predicts future behavior. So if somebody offended me before, it's more than likely that they're going to offend me again. If they did something bad before, they might do that again, right? The logical conclusion, when someone does us wrong, somebody will, right? We are to forgive them and allow them to start rebuilding that trust. And I, I wouldn't just say open it up and give them full trust again, because that that's, wouldn't be very bright on my part, right? So, the, but we need to start rebuilding that trust. Balance that forgiveness with discernment. So, like somebody lied to you or somebody lied about you. You forgave them. And they even apologized. So, but, and you, and you forgave them? And they, are they going to lie to you again? What if they do? What if they lie to you again? What if somebody tells you they lied about you after that? Then what do you do? You, well, see, that what happens is you opened up that trust and they broke the trust again. Now, the last time I preached about this, I preached about uh, when, uh, I think it was Peter that said, Lord, if my brother sins against me, what if I forgive him seven times? Is that right? You remember, you remember what I'm talking about? Seventy times something. That's what Jesus said. Now, when Peter said that, that's, that's one and a half times more than the, their law, what the Pharisees and scribes had said they needed to. They believed at that time, they believed that God forgave three times. And that for us, we needed to forgive three times. Now, if he said, my brother sinned against me seven times, and I forgive him seven times, and then he's like, God's halo on. <laughs> And Jesus said, 70 times 7. Not, not meaning count up that many 490 times. No, what Jesus meant was, you need to forgive a number beyond what you can count. Just be a forgiving person. That's, that's what he's saying. So when, when somebody comes to us and they say, I'm sorry, I sinned against you, we forgive them. And start rebuilding that trust. Using discernment, we're, you know, don't be a fool. Jesus didn't say he wanted us to be doormats. So, but we balance that forgiveness and discernment so that we build that trust again and we rebuild the trust. And look, some of the, I've had friends that for a long time, and maybe they offended me a long time ago, but we're close friends now. And that's, that's all stuff that's past. We don't even remember it. You know, it's, it's way in the back, way back there, way back. Now, uh, that's enough of that. I have to make sure. Sometimes I get, I have marks here where I'm supposed to hit my buttons. And now I think I missed a button. I just want to make sure I didn't miss a button. Jesus says, for if you forgive people their wrongdoing, your heavenly Father will forgive you as well. But if you don't forgive people, your Father will not forgive your wrongdoing. Whoa. This is uh, pardoning in prayer. Now, this wasn't stated as a command, but I want you to see this. Um, our, our, the forgiveness that we receive from God depends on our forgiveness for forgiving others. There's a correlation there between the two. If you're not forgiving, God's not going to forgive you. So I've kind of already pointed that out. This is Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Jesus has given us that right here. For if you forgive people their wrongdoing, your heavenly Father will forgive you as well. Yes. So let's be that way because that's what we want, right? I want to be forgiven by my Father. I want to have that forgiveness from Him. But if you don't forgive people, your Father will not forgive your wrongdoing. And boom. There you have it. <clears throat> In Mark 11, verses 22 to 25, um, because the other thing about the uh, forgiveness, the, our, our forgiving others has to do with our prayer life. How well are your prayers being answered? 
Does it seem like God's not listening to you? If it seems like you're praying and you're just praying to the walls, then check your forgiveness. Are you forgiving others? Because the, there is a correlation between those also. Your prayers aren't heard so well if you're not forgiving to others. And that's not me saying it again. This is Jesus. Jesus says it in Mark 11, 22 to 25. Listen. Have faith in God. I assure you, if anyone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, all the things you pray and ask for, believe that you have received them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you your wrongdoing. Now praying and that forgiveness is right there in the same, same passage again. He said, you need to be praying. Even while you're praying, if you're praying, make sure you forgive whoever it is that you, you have an offense against or has offended you. And that's also given as a command. Forgive them. If you want to go a step further, it's also when you worship. Um, I like to think it's like a cell phone. You, know, you ever get bad connection on a cell phone? You know, so I, 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 I sound like that. Hello? When, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Heavenly Father will also forgive your wrongdoing. Um, also in worship, In worship, if you are offering your gift on the altar and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. So you need to have that forgiveness and work those things out even when you come to worship. So don't come to worship with having a, a heart that's got animosity towards other people. Amen? Amen. You hear me? So if you're offering your gift on the altar, and there you remember, leave your gift there. Now, a good preacher would point out that, um, so if you're bringing your offering into church, and then after you get to church, you realize, i got something against somebody. I have to go make that right. Leave your offering here. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding about that. Oh, uh, so here. Here's an example. We talk about forgiveness. Here's a, a note. Can you just read that? I don't know if you can see that. Here's what it says. Dear Howard, I have been able, unable to sleep since I broke off our engagement. Won't you forgive and forget? Your absence is breaking my heart. I was a fool. No one can take your place. I love you. All my love, Belinda. P.S. Congratulations on winning the lottery this week. <laughs> Now, don't act like you guys are innocent and none of you have needed forgiveness from someone. During a sermon like this, we think, oh yeah, you know, so-and-so did that to me. I guess I could forgive them. So-and-so did, oh yeah, I, could, I guess I could forgive them. Okay, now wait, now what about you? Is there somebody that somebody needs to forgive you for something that you did? That's, that's what I want. Wait, no. We weren't thinking about that. What about the times that you were the offender? So if you're offering your gift, and there you remember, go be reconciled. Then come and offer your gift. And the other thing, we need to be, we need to be the ones that take the initiative for forgiveness because we, because we are a, a people that are forgiven. Right? I mean, what? I'm, I'm free from my sins. I'm free from the guilt of my sins because of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? I've been forgiven. I know what it's like to be forgiven, and it's nice. Right? We need to be that kind of forgiving people because we're forgiven. Um, one of the things, I think this, this is a, 
I want to add this in a little bit. Too many people are forgiving. Um, all right, well, wait. In your bulletins, look inside your bulletins. There's a word find in there. It's got Colossians 3 on it. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I left that verse off. What is it, 12 or 14? 12 or 14. Okay, verse 15 is not there, so you need to look up verse 15. Because I'm going to tell you what it says. Well, in verse 13, right there, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Now he's talking in verse chapter 3 in those verses, he's talking about the Christians in the church at Colossus. They're believers. We're believers. If you're a believer, shout amen. Amen. Now, we're, that's who he's talking to. He's talking to believers, and he's telling the believers, forgive anyone. If they if there's problems, they're um, forgive them. Right? Now when um, just as the Lord also forgives, that's how we should forgive. So when I, and I think about that, when the Lord forgave me when I was sorry. I think nowadays it seems to be it's like um, an expression of love to forgive somebody that's not sorry. It's like, well, well you know what are you supposed to do? Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting at all that you harbor any ill feelings or bad things towards people. But to offer forgiveness for someone that's not sorry, you know what that not sorry person will do? They're going to repeat whatever it was that offended you or offended somebody else. That, that's what I mean. So when we forgive somebody, forgive them the way God forgave us. When God forgave me, I was sorry for my sins. I was sorry for what I did wrong. And when I ask for forgiveness each day for something I mess up, it's because I'm sorry I did that. Or I'm sorry I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Right? That's when you receive forgiveness. Is when you're like, when you're sorry for the sin you committed. Now, now this isn't like a way out. So, well, I'm just not going to forgive anybody because nobody's sorry. No, that's not how it works. Because if somebody comes to you and says, I'm sorry, you got to forgive them. And that's Jesus says that. If he comes to you 490 times, forgive them 490 times. They come to you 490 times to tell you they're sorry, forgive them. But you don't, you're not obligated to forgive people that aren't sorry. Because all you're going to do is create a narcissist that doesn't care what they do and doesn't care how they treat people. You're not doing them a service. You're not showing them love. You're showing them the opposite of love. You're showing them the opposite of the truth. Look, you've done something wrong. You, you need to make that right. right. Right? Now, so, but that doesn't mean that we go after them or we, you know, we harbor anger. If you harbor that in your heart, it's going to just tear you up inside. It's going to come, become an infection that just infects you. But when, when you're... Um, well, what if you're the one that's the perpetrator? What if you're the offender? You need to go and tell them you're sorry. Same way. I'm sorry for what I did. Um, so, for instance, there's people that are, uh, are mad at me, and uh, I have no idea why. I have, I have ideas why. They don't talk to me anymore. What am I supposed to do? I'm not mad at them. I don't feel angry towards them. I don't want bad things to happen to them. Um, but if they, if if I need forgiveness from them, they're gonna have to tell me because I don't know what I did that made them mad at me. Right? Um, I'm not mad at them. I'm not hurt. Like I said, I'm not harboring bad feelings for them. But. Um, Otherwise, here's, here's the way it is. I'm not sorry because I didn't do anything wrong. Right? You see what I mean? So I'm not... It, now, if they just forgive me and acted like I didn't do anything, I wouldn't know that I offended them. You see what I mean? So it's not going to improve our relationship any. 
It's just going to be an artificial relationship where somebody says, I forgive you, even though there is no give and take. Forgiveness is like money. This, this will help you remember. Right? Forgiveness is like money. Everybody needs some, but nobody wants to give it away. And if you give it away, you want somebody to work for it, right? I'm not saying work for it, but at least acknowledge that you're sorry for what you did. Right? That makes sense. When I come to the Lord, I don't come to Him and say, look, I did whatever I want. you got to forgive me. You don't, it doesn't work that way. Lord, I did wrong. I'm sorry. I don't want to do that anymore. So, if somebody lies to me, and then they come and they tell me that they're sorry, I forgive them. I'll check. Are you going to lie to me again? Because, you know. If somebody steals from me, and then they come and they say, forgive me, I forgive them. And they'll hide my values. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? You have, to, you have to build that trust again. You have to build that trust. And that's how we work. Now look, the, now for me, this is what I think. This is a thing from God. God has given us this. God has given us the ability to have relationships with each other. Where we can give and take. Where we can, uh, look, I offended you. I did something wrong. I'm sorry. Even if I didn't intend to do it. If you come to me and say, look, what you did hurt me this way. I'm sorry. I didn't intend to hurt you that way. And I'm sorry. You know what I mean? That, that's how we build relationships with each other. And that's how we continue a relationship. My, my friends that I, that I own the property with down in New Lex, I've known them since uh, we were in high school, juniors in high school. There's been times when we have fights. We bicker about things. But you know what? We work it out, and we don't harbor bad feelings we don't keep bringing up what somebody did 20 years ago. But instead, we still have a good, strong relationship because when things did happen, we made it right. But you all know that, right? Amen? Amen. So, God tells us to forgive. And we need to be a forgiving people. And before we can do that, we need to make sure that we're right with Him. And then before we're right with him, be reminded of if you're not right with somebody else, we need to get those things right all the way around. Thank you, Lord, in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that you give us a way that we can come to you for forgiveness. We can repent. And you even tell us in your word, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to be the forgiving people that you tell us we need to be. Help us to follow your commands and be forgiving. I pray, Lord, that we'll help in our relationships. Our relationships will grow stronger because of, of the trust that we rebuild with the people around us. And Lord, it's because you are the one that inspired us to be forgiven and to be forgiving. And I pray that You'll work on each one of us. If there's something, even while your spirit speaks to our hearts right now, if there's somebody in our, in our lives that we know that we need to be reconciled with, I pray, Lord, that you'll reveal that to us now. Remind us of that person. And, and I pray, Father, also that you'll give us a little insight how we can rebuild that relationship. Lord, you are the author of salvation and the author of forgiveness. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help us to be forgiving people. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're going to sing just a couple verses of Just As I Am. If you'd stand with me. And uh, during this time, I'd like for you to pray. And ask the Lord if there's any things that you could do better in your heart. Um, oh, wait, before we do that. Did you find that verse? Oh, yes, I did. Colossians 3, 15. Um, look that up. Because he says in that, that let the peace of the Messiah, um, 
Mm-hmm. Right. Wait. Let's read it again. Listen now. Listen. 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 And let the peace of the Messiah, to which you were called in one body, control your hearts to be faithful. Now, let the peace of the Messiah that, that called us into one body, that's what it says, so we're one church. So the peace of the Messiah that called us into one body, let the peace of the Messiah control your heart is the next phrase. Control your heart. Let the peace of the Messiah control your heart. I looked that up in the Greek, and that word for control is um, umpire. Let be the umpire of your heart. You, you know, it's like when uh, little boys are playing baseball and there's an umpire there, and the umpire is the one that s- makes the rule or says which rules were broke, right? Let um, this peace of the Messiah be the umpire in your heart so that when, when we're wronged by somebody, let him be the umpire. Let his peace be the umpire of our heart. So we're not getting angry at somebody. Instead, we're going to somebody and saying, look, I need forgiveness. Will you forgive me? Let him be the umpire that call, makes the calls, mm-hmm. right? And he'll guard also our hearts in that. Because, you know, when people do us wrong, it hurts, doesn't it? Now, let's see. Sophia for carrying us. 